and your cataract coach. Let's look at a routine case here. We're instilling some anesthetic inside this eye. The patient's a little squeamish. The patient's gotten a little bit of intravenous versed to help relax. And so now we're putting some preservative-free lidocaine in the eye and also on the cornea. I'm going to put some viscoelastic in here. Notice how we want the wave of viscoelastic coming across the eye. That wave of the dispersive viscoelastic really will coat the endothelium of the cornea and provide better protection. The dots on the cornea, of course, are at the cardinal meridians 12, 6, 3, and 9 o'clock to mark the with the rule and against the rule axes. Here's the diamond keratome being used to make a temporal incision right at the 180 degree axis. It's a single plane incision. Here we want an incision of about 2.75, and the reason is it's going to help reduce the astigmatism this patient has, about a diopter of astigmatism. Uh, against the rule, so steep at 180. So by placing this phaco incision on that steep axis, it helps. Forceps going in the eye to make our capsular axis. We're creating a nice round, con continuous capsular axis in the anterior lens capsule. We want to make it sufficiently large. You can aim for about a 5.5 millimeter capsular axis. Keep in mind that the capsular axis will shrink wrap down. So if you start off with a 5, 0.5 millimeter capsular axis, it'll probably shrink wrap down to about 5.0 millimeters after a couple weeks of healing. There's a nice round capsular axis that looks great. This patient is actually also a professor who traveled to see me from out of state. It's always a big honor to operate on a fellow professional and fellow professor. Hydrodissection being performed to loosen the lens nucleus from the capsule. Here we've slightly prolapsed one end out of the capsular bag. Importantly, that was a recoat of viscoelastic for the endothelium. Faco Pro being placed in the eye, chopper being placed. This is a high vacuum, high flow setting. Put the chopper behind the cataract and chop it. That's the flip and chop. So we flipped it out of the capsule bag and chopped it. One quadrant's already gone. There's the second quadrant, and we're now working on the second half. Now we're being very careful. There's a little bit of the epinuclear shell. The second half is sitting in the capsule bag. And we need to slowly bring it out of the capsule bag before fully applying the emulsification power to it. There, now it's out of the bag. Now we can give more vacuum, have more flow, and of course, apply more ultrasonic energy. Very little ultrasonic energy is needed in this case, and this patient should have a nice clear cornea post-op day one. Chopper being put in the safe position to protect from fluidic imbalances to make sure the posterior capsule stays away. Well, it looks great. I'm going to switch to their irrigation aspiration probe to remove the lens cortex. So here's the IA probe. We'll place the IA probe inside the eye. There are a few little small fragments that we can remove. In addition, we'll take away the cortex. So nice and slow in a circumferential manner, removing all the cortex. Eye stays in primary, except in the sub-incisional space, where it's okay to bring the eye out of primary in order to access that sub-incisional cortex. There's a big removal of a sheet of cortex, and the eye's looking pretty good. We'll do a little polishing of the posterior capsule as well, make sure we've gotten out the vast majority of all these little epithelial cells from the lens and the cortex pieces. That looks great. Time to fill the capsule bag. Here we're going to use a cohesive viscoelastic, which is more solid-like and easy removed from the eye. We fill the capsule bag. There's a nice round capsular axis. And we're going to place our eye well in the capsule bag. Here we go. Delivery of a single piece acrylic lens right in the capsule bag. We'll use the chopper now to help the lens unfold and to orient it appropriately. Now, if you orient the lens at the 12 and 6 o'clock position for the haptics, You'll be able then to slightly nudge the lens nasally, which is where the central visual axis of the eye is and where the pupillary axis is as well. Going under the eye well to remove the viscoelastic. There we see it coming out. And now we go above, clearing out the anterior chamber, and we'll put the eye well into good position as well. Now you see the capsule edge is overlapping the optic. And remember, it's going to shrink wrap down a little bit more. This will be just about perfect as the eye heals. Time to seal up the incisions. Note that we're relatively gentle here. I don't like a ton of hydration. I did just a little bit right of the incision. We'll go in through our paracentesis and wash out to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic in that angle. Get that out of the eye as well. Recenter our lens, make sure it's nicely um, centered in the pupil. 
seal up the paracentesis. In this eye, we're also going to put some medication. We're going to put a preservative-free triamcinolone. That's a good anti-inflammatory effect for at least a few days. We put a total dose in of less than a milligram. There's just a little bit of triamcinolone. Patient's going to have a little bit of hazy vision initially, but that'll clear up fast. Here's a little bit of uh, more saline to seal the incision. And then finally, we're going to end with some preservative-free moxifloxin in the corneal stroma and on top of the eye. Finally, a sponge soaked in tetracaine is going to be used to help the incisions, as well as to provide anesthesia here nasally, where we're going to continue uh, treating the astigmatism by making a small limbal relaxed incision. Fixation ring is down, it's marked in clock hours, set it on the 180, and we'll do approximately one clock hour at a depth of about 500 microns. There we go. And that should provide just about a total of one diopter flattening. Everything looks great, and the patient is expected to do beautifully. Thank you for watching.